Good morning, everybody. Thanks for being here. I will be talking about implementing SALT modules to automate things where no one has written a module yet. Um, okay, here we are. The agenda for today, I will talk something about the motivation why we did implement own modules. Um, we will look at the two kinds. We had to implement execution modules and state modules. We'll see that the function signatures uh, represent the module parameters. We'll have some examples. And at the end, we'll talk about gain or pain. Um, was it worth what we did? The motivation for own modules was that we do run HANA databases in scale. We have more than 100 of them. We deploy with SALT, so we run the OS installation and the configuration of the OS and the HANA installation. But we also wanted to do the final configuration of HANA as well. And two pain points for us were the HANA parameters which are stored in any files and the HANA user store, which is a credential store, so you can access the database without providing a username and a password. And this is needed for monitoring systems and something like that. Our final goal was to deploy and configure HANA databases so they are ready for usage uh, for the application. And just to give a number, we have more than 100 HANA instances running, so it was worth to look at automation to get things done and in a high quality. SAP HANA is a commercial in-memory database provided by SAP, and at the time we did this, there were no community modules. Um, right now we have something from Uni Magdeburg, which does part what we need, but uh, not all. So that was part of the motivation for us. So um, HANA parameters, uh, the first thing we looked at, these are standard Windows INI files with a section header and a key and value store. And there's a SALT module for that, but uh, it works with the file contents and that's bad for us because if I change the INI file, I need to restart the HANA database, and this means downtime for our customers. So it's a really bad idea to do with that for us. We have two other options. Uh, the first is to use an SQL statement, um, where you need a database credential to log on to the database and set the parameters, and you can have a Python script provided by SAP that's exactly that. And both these options can set most parameters dynamically, and that's what we use. The second module, and this will be our example for today, um, is the configuration of the HANA user stores, so we can have external commands running against the database. SAP uses them, for example, to monitor the solution manager, um, backup tools are using that and uh, lots of other things. The command that does these things is HDB user store and I've provided here only a short excerpt from the parameters. The first is to set a new key um, and the key is the name under which this entry is stored. The environment is the host name, the port number and uh, possibly the database name, as well as a username and a password. With delete, we can delete a key, and with list, um, we get the keys uh, in the data, in the HDB user store. So um, let's look at how we can uh, work with SALT to get uh, external commands running, and internally we use a so-called execution module. 
This is for getting the current uh, configuration of the user store and to set the desired state. Uh, so store a new entry with new values. Our plan was to have the execution module as simple as possible and you use the OS or, the, or database commands uh, that are provided by the tools you want to configure. And the execution modules, um, the function names should be verbs because they are do, doing something that you want to, to, to do with the, con the database. So um, I've provided the two links um, with the documentation and uh, the documentation is really well written, so have a look at it if you want to uh, program your own execution and state modules. The execution modules are stored somewhere in the file root underscore modules, so you can have more than one file root in the salt configuration. Um, pick what you need. Um, the documentation is in PyDoc. This is really useful to get with the command line at the documentation and also the uh, SALT project uses the uh, PyDoc commands to generate the web uh, pages. Um, whenever you change an execution module on the SALT master, you need to sync it to your minion. Um, therefore call SALT utils uh, sync underscore modules. And the call is quite simple, salt, the host name you want to call, and the module name dot function to call the function and optional parameters as you need it. Our execution module is stored in uh, the file hana.pi. Um, we use it for the uh, execution modules for the user store as well as for the parameters. Therefore, we just picked uh, HANA and not uh, HANA user store. Um, three functions that we use is HDB user store set to set a key. And we'll see that the function parameters are exactly the same things that we had at the command uh, HDB user store set. So, there is a simple connection between the command we will call at the end and the parameters we need to set here. The other uh, function is to get a user store entry and to delete a key if we don't need it any longer. We have an optional parameter here, the operating system user. Um, the HANA database runs under a special user, the SID ADM. So SID stands for Subsystem Identification and is the name of the database instance. And as a default, we use that user, but we have some situations where the root or another user needs to have an HEB user store, so we provide here an optional parameter. Um, we don't have an HDB user store list as an execution module. We decided to have uh, our module working with a single key as an instance that we want to configure. Another option would have been to specify the complete HDB user store with all users there, but that uh, is not how we work. So we, we look at uh, single entries here. <clears throat> the execution module call uh, on the left hand side, we'll see the command as we use it on the operating system and we get a more or less simple list with the key, the environment uh, where the user store entry should connect to, the username, the database, uh, which is optional. Uh, what we don't get with the command is the password. So this is some guesswork whether we have the same password as it is, as it is stored in the user store or not. On, on the right, right hand side, um, we have the salt call doing exactly the same thing and we get back a dictionary with the configuration as it is on the operating system. Um, 
In the port number here, I used NN for the system instance number um, that can be set on the installation from the HANA database, and that's uh, something that is one time set when installing. So now we can get a single entry, we can uh, set an entry. Um, but what we want to do with SALT is to define a desired state, what we want the system to look like at the end of the call. And the desired state, um, as we programmed it in the state module, uses the execution module to do what we need to change on the operating system. The states are also stored in the file root, uh, now in the file, uh, directory underscore states. The documentation is as well written in PyDoc, just uh, as I said before. Um, for the execution modules, I said we use verbs for the function names, and for the state modules, you use adjectives. So, you say, should it be present, should it be absent, or something else. Sprich, how should it be at the end? And the state module is hopefully simple Python code and data structures um, that shouldn't be too complex. And we can do some things like test mode, for example, so we can display what the module in the real run would do as well as we'll get a diff, what will change on the system. I've provided a link to the documentation here, and this documentation is really, really good, because it walks you through a complete state module with the steps you need to do. You can just cut and paste uh, the example code, fill in your variables, your uh, if, uh, switches and, and so on, and it's pretty easy to just fill in the blanks. Um, the function signatures are approximately the same as the module parameters. That's something we've seen with the execution modules before. Um, in our example, we use the file HDB user store, where we work with these things. And the function is, for example, absent. I've used a simple one for the first example. And uh, the uh, state call uh, on the right-hand side is what you will write in a salt uh, state. Um, I tried to provide the colors. Uh, the black one is the file where the code is stored, or the module name from the state module. The function name uh, is in red here on the slide and is used to call the, the function and the parameters. Um, yes, they are the same on both sides. So that, that's pretty simple once you uh, understand how, how that happens. How does a state module work internally? The first uh, thing you should do is verify the parameters. Is there a database with this uh, subsystem ID? Is there a call uh, possible to HDB user store to get the uh, information uh, from the system and so on? Then you will get the current state from the operating system. For example, is there a key uh, that should be present or not, uh, absent or not, and act accordingly? accordingly. Um, if you prepare for a test mode, and I really suggest you should do that, um, you just compare what is on the system compared to the desired state from the state, uh, from the soul state. And if it is uh, not the same, you can in test mode display the change and exit here, and that's fine. When we are not in the test mode, we apply the changes by calling the execution modules we defined earlier. So the user store entry will be deleted from the um, operating system. And for verification, we should recheck the state of the system if 
it really worked to, for example, delete the user stock key. And if all is well, we return the collected changes, and if it's not well, for example, the deletion has not happened, we can return an error. These steps you will find also in the documentation, and with the next explanation, what to do there and how it might be a good idea to do that. What's not so easy, but is uh, also described in the documentation, is how the state module returns the success or failure. You provide a Python dictionary with the name uh, of the file uh, or the key you used, the result, was it successful or not, and a descriptive text which can be user store has been deleted or has been changed or added or whatever. And for each key you can provide an old and a new key so the Python, uh, the salt command can display a div um, for the user so we can really see what has been changed on the system. Calling a state module uh, is um, with salt, uh, with the host name state.apply. So um, we run here a command stored in the HTTP user score test file. And uh, on the left hand side, on the bottom, you see the state HTTP user store dot absent. On the SID SID, the key with test should be deleted. And the output is on the right hand side. What we see here is that the changes really describe the old key has been used to test. Um, I've omitted uh, the environment and the user. But there is no new key, so the the user store has been deleted, and that's what we left in the command as well. The other thing to ensure that the HDB user store exists, um, I've used uh, a test state here. Um, we call the module HDB user store uh, with a function dot present, and we need to provide all the data we need for the command to set the HTTP user store, which is the SID, the host name, and the port number, um, the user name, the password, and we added a verify option to have some safety net that we won't uh, do damage to the system. Um, what we do is, for example, if we set a user store entry, we take the username, we take the password, we connect to the database, and if it works, then we are pretty sure the user store will work after we set it. If it doesn't work, in the normal case, without verify faults, we just give an error and say, oh, you are setting a user store key that won't possibly work, so we won't do that, but you can force it. And that's as simple as it is. <clears throat> we use it for initial deployment of the HANA databases. First we create the user, we generate a random password, and with that password we can create a user store so it works together. We also used it for second day operations. Um, we have some users where we change uh, the password regularly, so we can set the password in the database and the user store we are a script. And another thing we did um, in the last month was that we initially initially started using only a short host name in the user store entries, but we wanted to switch to the full qualified domain name so we could finally work with uh, TSL certificates that match. And the other thing we changed is that we used to have the host name cologne and the port number for each database. So the admin needed to know the exact port number of the database and we switched that to the add database command to use the right one. 
And just to give you a ballpark number, um, we have more than 100 databases. Each database instance has a system DB and a tenant for where the application data is stored. That's uh, times two and approximately 15 user store entries for each database. So we had around about 3,000 user store entries that needed to be changed. We found five pre-existing errors where the users has been locked due to wrong passwords, uh, which nobody knew before, so we just fixed that. And during the change, no, breaking, no breakage was inflicted, so the system really worked well and none of our admins possibly had to work around something by us. So, and that's already the end, gain or pain. When there is no salt module, you can use command run to set something on the operating system and in the most cases it will work just fine. What we often do is do this command only if another command says it isn't correct right now. So you can have something like, like item potency even when you run the command module. But for us, it was useful to try to get uh, something like the state module running for us so we can really define a desired state and not have some commands that just uh, juggle with the command options. And also nice is that we have item potency that the stored state will not change um, if there's nothing to do. You need to think about what your execution module looks like so you can just use what the operating system provides as a command or if you do something in the database um, you just pick the fields that you need from the database for example. What needs more thought was to define a desired state. What is it really describing what I want to have from the operating system? What should the system look like at the end? And for us also the option to verify that the connect to the database is not broken during the run was uh, very useful for us. And that's something where we had to try different things, um, moved uh, parameters around, uh, thought about names of the parameters, and that's uh, useful to have descriptive and well-documented names you can uh, use and, and work with. So the gain, we got item potency, we got a test mode, we got validation that the system is really in the desired state and it displays the changes we needed. And um, if you look back at the uh, last slide, uh, 3,000 uh, user store entries, if an admin does that, he gets crazy by time. Still not all is well, some pain is there, you have code to write, you have to test it, you have to maintain it. There will be changes needed in the future, that's something that is unavoidable. Um, on the other hand, the modules for execution and the HANA parameters and the HTTP user store are roughly 1000 lines, so that's not really much code. Our takeaway is it's easy enough that it works quite well, and we are happy with it. And if you work with SALT and have something where there is no module, look at the documentation. It's really useful, and it's quite easy to get your own modules running and maybe distributed. That's something we plan to do. Um, we had a nice chat a couple of days ago with the SUSE manager team. We do know that uh, some people from the Uni Magdeburg provide some salt modules. Either way, um, we hope to provide uh, the code as well. Um, 
In the meantime, you will find it on my homepage under the URL given here. So I'm finished for today and open to questions. Hello, thank, thank you first. Um, I wanted to know you, your store, you're having passwords in, uh, in your state calls. Yes. Are you moving, have you moved them into um, GPG encrypted pillars? Right now we don't have that, but uh, we are using a vault, yes. Okay. And in the state files, you completely um, didn't mention the uh, ID of the state. Um, yes. And this yes. one, this thing is passed as a name also, sometimes it's used as, as a name. So you can just use an, um, a username, for instance, or whatever you want, and just use it, use it as one of the parameters in your function. Yes, exactly. The, that's what we do. Um, when we uh, provision a new HANA database, we will have something we call a bill of material, where we have the host name, the HANA database uh, instance that will be installed there, the name of the tenants in there, and also a list of the users we want to provide for each tenant. And all this data is collected uh, and uh, um, in loops, we just fill in the blanks and the username, the SID, and the password from the vault. So yes, you can just write a single entry, but we have really loops around that and read the usernames and the SID from our bill of materials. And in salt speak, it is a pillar. So also about the password, um, if you use the present state, um, can you figure out that the password is correct because you don't get it back from the list command? Or do you just always have to reapply the password? We do um, a, a pretty simple thing. If we want to set a password, we first try to connect with the existing user store. If it works, fine. We connect with the provided username and password. If it also works, uh, a moment. If it doesn't work, we just collect it and say, okay, the user store is broken, we can fix it, whatever. It, it won't be any worse at the end. But if it works, we just try to connect with username and password, and if it also works, we know it's the same, it's all good, and only the rest of the environment needs to be changed, for example. And, and that's our safety net. Um, what experience do you have regarding performance? How long does it take to apply that for, for a no-op? How long does it take to apply for when there are many changes needed? Uh, yes. Um, we were some afra something afraid to do a mass change of the HTTP user store, so we just had a list of host names and uh, tried it once, one by one and, and collected the result and we're pretty sure that we wouldn't uh, break anything. And to change all the around about 30 HTTP user store entries is maybe 15 seconds for a test run, for a check to, to see if there is anything broken and the uh, um, real run also 15 seconds. So. Uh, to fix one server was about a minute. Are you happy with that, or should hmm? it be? Are you happy with that, or is that something to be improved? Or you know, my experience with Salt is sometimes that obviously what Salt is doing is just you know working with the system underneath, and that can be slow. And sometimes it's also like Salt itself feels a bit slow with the dry run, with the test run, where you say like, what yes. is it doing? Yes, we have uh, our bill of material that's a pillar that's uh, quite big and to get it synced to the minion can take some time and that's uh, often what is really slowing us down. But in the end, um, we have all data we need, so it's fine for us. 
And everything we do right now is really, really much faster than we did in the past. Um, when we started using SALT to deploy our inner databases, um, we compared it with what we did uh, before. We had documentation and an admin that just uh, crossed the T's and uh, dotted the I's and so on, and that took more than a day. And right now we deploy a HANA database uh, with one or two tenants in about 30 minutes. So it's fast enough for us. Well, thank you for being here. It was a pleasure and have a nice day with the next talk.